big big round of applause for Ms. Hoda to conduct this session. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, I would first like to do the audio setup because all my panelists are virtual. So let's just set them up. So we have uh, Dr. Maida Fan with us, who's the marketing director for Seven Solutions. Uh, we have Imran Ghazali, who's the GM for Digital Media Wing, Government of Pakistan. Uh, we have Mehmood Hanif, who's the brand leader for Lily, and uh, I don't think we have Mohammed Akram connected yet. He's joining. Oh. Can we have Mohammed Akram, who's the director commercial PCL? Thank you for joining us. Can you guys just do a sound check if I'm audible? Uh, one by one, if you can hear me. Hello, hi Huda. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you're audible. Uh, Mehmood Saab. Hello Huda. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks. Hi Huda. Uh, I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Uh, so we can start up. Uh, I think it's great to be here, you know, a lot of health experts and I come from a very different background. Um, I'm the brand leader for a brand called Liveboy Soap. Uh, but whatever you guys have been discussing so far, I think is a lot of area of interest for us. Uh, because this brand for us is not just a soap, uh, it's a brand with a bigger purpose, which is saving lives. Uh, and while, you know, this might sound a little superficial, because at the end of the day, it's a but uh, in the last two years after COVID, we've really seen that, you know, a single soap can really save your lives. Um, so, you know, as a brand, that's the kind of vision we are taking forward and what kind of expertise, health expertise, we can collaborate with the brand to take forward this vision. If I simply, before, you know, starting the panel, I can just give a few examples of what we are doing as a brand. Uh, so, you know, starting from basic awareness of health and hygiene. I don't know how many people have seen that campaign, but even though it's my brand, but it's my personal favorite that you can use any soap, whether it's Safeguard, Detol, Lux, so just use your hands. So that is the kind of, you know, vision Lifebuoy is taking that, you know, spreading major mass awareness to people. Um, and while we're doing that, you know, just seeing that 99.9% .9 germ protection, that's clearly not enough because every other brand which you will see now in market, be it Detol, be it, you know, Safeguard, Protex, will be talking about the similar thing. Uh, so as a brand, we start to see that, you know, how can we bring about a service platform, like let's say a telehealth, which gives us that expertise so that, you know, consumers differentiate us from any other brand. So it was really interesting to see, you know, how you pay telehealth, pay, and there is a future out there, because personally, from a very numbers and brands perspective, I don't look at scalability in this scalability. Uh, also, I think consumer adaptation and adoption may be a problem. Uh, but we do want to, you know, explore this platform, get into that segment because the future is generally getting expertise and not being a generalized brand. Uh, so with the panel, I would want to start the discussion, you know, what do you think? You know, when we, for instance, talk about telehealth, uh, is it easy to get consumers, you know, uh, into a new platform? Because if my health is bad and I belong to a, you know, upper class segment of uh, the country, I would probably go visit a doctor. Uh, so this consumer behavior change as part of your industry, how do you think your companies are doing that? Uh, you know, so let's just start with Dr. Maida. What's your view on that? Sure, no, and it's a, uh, thank you, Huda. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, it's a very important question. I think, you know, when we talk about uh, the penetration of telemedicine, uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, two major populations. So if we're talking about the 70% majority that resides in the rural areas, that's where we, lit we have to take some proactive measures, um, you know, support initiatives, um, outreach programs uh, to actually reach the people in the rural areas and, you know, give them the control literally in the palm of their own hands so they can take control of their own health. Um, this is something that Zevin is actually doing. Uh, we're very proud to be, uh, you know, uh, giving, doing a Zevin uh, Gives Back community program where we're actually going to remote areas 
in uh, Bhawalpur and we're taking our telemedicine systems, our integrated telemedicine systems, and we've set up camps there as well, not only for uh, telemedicine, but for uh, tech education as well. So um, one of the major factors, I think, Uday, is to establish a layer of trust because in our society, unfortunately, um, not a, a lot of people have... Uh, uh, you know, trust on doctors or even the telemedicine system, they're not aware of it. Uh, so this is something that we really need to start at the grassroots level, educate lady health workers there, the midwives, the general uh, practitioners within their society that they already have a layer of trust established with and then sort of try to, you know, uh, implement our telehealth solutions there. And, you know, this has been talked at length in previous panels as well, that digitization is inevitable. So uh, whether we jump, decide to jump on the bandwagon, bandwagon or not, uh, it's going to creep up on us anyway. Um, you know, so but uh, talking about the urban population, if we talk about the urban majority, where the internet penetration is extremely high, there are millions of smartphone users. Here, I think we're falling short because we're not able to tap into the consumer mindset still, I believe. You know, I was reading a report and it said that 40% of uh, consumers, they, they base their purchasing decisions based on one Google review. You know, to us, a Google review might seem insignificant, but for somebody that is going to make a decision, it's a deal maker or breaker. You know, 60% of people now for basic medical advice, they turn to Google for basic medical advice rather than turning to a, calling up a doctor. So, you know, I see these great digital technologies out there, but if you don't have some sort of online presence, if you don't establish some sort of social proof and you don't have some sort of digital footprint um, that consumers can base their decision making on, I think that that's where we're going to, we're going to fall short. Definitely. Would anyone want to add? Uh, Mehmootsa, would you want to add something on that? I think for me, uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me and it's a pleasure to be here and the congratulations to all of the organizers for organizing such an amazing uh, conference today. So for me, telehealth, I think there are two things we need uh, in terms of uh, creating a broader adoption. One is commitment, another is collaboration. I think commitment and collaboration are extremely important between the policy makers, the insurers, and also the health infrastructures. I'm sure Imran uh, is representing government and he would elaborate more on that. But I think this is where we have seen in the last two years when we all move from a uh, brick and mortar system to we are all in our own homes. So kis tarah se telehealth ki adoption increase hui hai? We have, uh, I think aap sabhi, sabhi logo ne amne dekha ki sab panelists isi ki baat karein ki digitalization bahut improve hui. Similarly, telehealth significantly improve. Even in US, there are more than 260 telehealth companies currently working and supporting. Even though not only companies, even our hospital be jate hain, the hospital is also offering you would you like to set up your next appointment digitally? Are you interested? These are the standard questionnaires coming on our way. So I think if we commitment ke saath, collaborate kare, among all these stakeholders, ease out on the policies, enable the infrastructure, make sure uh, what se payment is done if we look digitally. Dekhe. So there should be all these processes should be in place so that people are able to adopt. The other thing is that we also need to accept that there are there will be a smaller portion of early adopters. You, usually you have you bring any new innovation, you're around 2.5 percent who will early adopt. You have then uh, the early majority, which is 13 percent. So there are around 15, 16 percent who will major, uh, early uh, early adopt some innovation. And then later on, it will it will take it show an uptake. So I think we also need to show patience towards it that early those who are adopting, we facilitate the environment and then we let uh, let the other masses to adopt that too. So these are just uh, some of my additions onto that. Yeah, I, I think it's very interesting where you said that, you know, digitization is here to be and there's a lot of collaboration which can happen. Um, so my next question would be that, do you guys think that, you know, there are probably other industries out there who have better competencies when it comes to being uh, the digital lead? So you have the marketing uh, industries, you have different brands which have that kind of expertise. So do you feel that, you know, there are industries where you can probably learn from or collaborate more? Uh, so let's say like I, when I was planning for my telehealth campaign for Lifeboy, 
my pitch to uh, let's say a sehat kahani was that you know i bring that expertise of marketing i bring that a lot of research and media platforms and you have that health expert so do you guys think that you know there are other industries uh, and i i'm going to ask you akram saab if you can answer that you know where you can probably learn and is there room for more synergies because agar hum shayad isolation mein kaam kar rahe hain to wo impact abhi create ho nahi pa raha hai certainly a lot of good thing can happen uh, in the morning my senior colleagues uh, elaborately said that uh, that we are bound by the regulation pharmaceutical industry certainly we ca can't go to the patient directly for the advertisement of the medicine but we can do lot of good work around the disease areas we are working in uh, every company has some expertise in some areas and some leadership like we are leader in uh, oral anti diabetic therapy we are leader in neuro psychiatry medicine so recently we did a couple of things with the technology companies uh, like in diabetes we are working on a app uh, as you all know that in diabetes this is not important that patient takes only medicine if its disease outcome has to be improved it's not only medicine it's all about his lifestyle his choices of the me meals he is taking his weight and lot of other things if a company work on some application which help patient in managing not only his drug or medicine also his lifestyle how many hours or how many minutes he exercised in a day and what he took in the morning what he took at the lunch and in the evening and he is counting that and if they are linking its blood sugar levels uh, to the mobile app so making his journey through the diabetes easier so that's another digital touch point that you are making life of the patient easier mm. similarly uh, we are in neuropsychiatry so we had a survey that most of the patient in our society doesn't go and doesn't talk about the mental illness so we are designing a chatbot with a technology company which will answer some common questions about the anxiety depression and common mental illness and that will not only answer those question but that app or that chatbot will also guide that patient about the uh, you can say about the leading uh, psychiatrist or leading physician which can help him in that area hmm. so these type of intervention certainly this cannot be done alone as a pharmaceutical company yes. we need the help of tech guys to uh, embark upon this journey so lot of collaboration can be can happen uh, for the patient but that can only happen when we'll be focusing uh, on the patient how its life can be improved got it um my next question would be i think related to this because jab aap log marketing ki baat karte hain so you guys have a very clear thing in your mind ki kahan interventions karne hai consumers ko kis tarah research karna hai and uh, i'm just drawing parallels to what i do i have a very fixed approach that you know i go for mass awareness i go for digital so in very simple terms if i have to understand that you know what is the difference between your healthcare marketing and the conventional marketing which you see out there uh, so i first i'll ask uh, someone from the virtual panel so imran saab if you want to add into that yep uh, thank you again first of all i would like to thank uh, for having me in this panel today Uh, so I'll just share, you know, a couple of examples from the government's point of view. Also, uh, as we've all seen, uh, this COVID, the pandemic, you know, when it came, hit the world, it kind of forced the whole world to fast enough towards the digital transformation. In this sense, the government of Pakistan has also done a lot of work on this. And there are a few examples. Uh, you know, uh, currently, if we look at the Pakistani digital landscape. Uh, there are 110 people with access to internet uh, through mobile phones uh, there are more than 60 million uh, social media users that we have in pakistan jisme facebook being the largest more than 50 million people access facebook monthly uh, and similarly you know a lot of people now have uh, access to uh, internet through their mobile phones so jab uh, when you know covid started the government of pakistan ministry of health especially it also collaborated with these uh, technology giants such as google facebook to usme sabse pehle uh, purpose you know one of the was creating awareness as you also mentioned a lot of brands got together uh, you know for the 
ایس او پی میسجنگ جس میں ہینڈ واشنگ اور اس کے اوپر کافی زیادہ اسٹریس کیا گیا سملرلی دا گورنمنٹ آف پاکستان منسٹری آف ہیلتھ وی کلیبریٹیڈ ود آل دا کانٹینٹ کریٹرس یوٹیوبرس انفلوئنسرس اور ان کے تھرو یو نو وی ران دا کیمپینس جس کے تھرو آؤٹ ریچ کافی زیادہ بڑھ سکتی ہے ڈیجیٹلی پھر وی وی آلسو سین یو نو دا پارٹ دیٹ این سی او سی ہیز پلیڈ ان ٹرمس آف جو جتنی بھی ویکسینیشن کی رجسٹریشن ہیں دے آر آل ہیپننگ آن لائن اس کی سرٹیفکیٹس بھی ہیں ٹریولنگ ریلیٹڈ آل آف دیٹ از آلسو ہیپننگ آن لائن یو نو ڈیجیٹلی ایوری ون از یوزنگ دیٹ اینڈ دین ایف یو لک ان دا کراس انڈسٹری تو وی آلسو سی یو نو in the education uh, sector or education area again because the schools were closed down universities colleges were sab kuch closed down ho gaya tha so uh, most of the public and private schools they had to switch to digital form of communication with the students so usme bhi bahut zyada usage hua so similarly uh, you know uh, in in this sector i think again because of the numbers uh, number of people who have access to social media and internet nowadays it's it's you know has become very important uh, for the industry to also use these tools or usme uh, to reach out again uh, you know we uh, there are some programs that facebook is also running uh, just to tell you the you know efficiency of these programs so there are there is an option of like you know you can register as a blood donor on on facebook and if someone near your location uh you know is requiring blood you can get a notification on all of that so with this you know uh, bundling up with technology it's it just gives us so much more opportunities to go into this area and i think for the health tech sector uh you know i have seen a lot of like you know pharmaceutical companies now again coming on digital media using the social media to communicate and increase their outreach and this is you know this is the way to go ahead with this and like you know in this area also uh, again when we l- talk about digital marketing there are more options available there are, you know targeting options available you can uh, geo target you can target by uh, people's interest uh, their age their gender so all of these uh, you know communication or outreach mechanism have only become better uh with the way that digital is growing especially in pakistan also definitely uh, can i also hear from dr maida and mehmood because in your specific companies do you feel that you know marketing is now similar to conventional marketing yeah abhi bhi you feel you know it's very different from the conventional marketing happening out there Yes, so uh, Huda, I'm so glad you asked this question uh, because healthcare marketing or marketing in the healthcare sector is actually a little bit different than uh, say other industries, simply because we're dealing with such a sensitive subject, right? Healthcare is such a private affair. We're still a society which doesn't talk about uh, health issues very openly. So, you know, if we look in the B2C space, um, the transaction between a healthcare professional uh, and a patient is, is based on a lot of trust, confidence, compassion, empathy, you don't see that transaction, say, in the retail industry, for example, uh, or in the B2B space, you know, if we want to, um, uh, uh, you know, implement an EMR in a healthcare organization, the, the decision makers might be a board of directors, for instance, or change management professionals, uh, but the end user really is the healthcare professional that ends up using the system. And so when we, and they're not necessarily involved in the decision making process, So, you know, when we see these overwhelming statistics that, yes, there's a 90% adoption rate of digital technology, that is true. But on the flip side, we do see, see some pushback as well from healthcare professionals because, you know, we live in a time where healthcare systems are collapsing, unfortunately, even more so due to COVID. Um, doctors are on the brink of burnout. Uh, you know, uh, they, the last thing they want to do is uh, adapt to another change or another new thing. So, you know, while patient centricity is vital, it's fundamental, I do believe that um, keeping in mind the challenges of healthcare providers is also very important. And to keep in, you know, to, so we can make the provider experience seamless as well. Uh, so just coming back to your question, just holistically viewing the different types of consumers in the healthcare funnel, I think it's, it's very important from a marketing perspective. Thank you, Uda, from my side. Th- thank you so much, Maida. Uh, from my side, I can tell you that uh, before COVID, 
I think uh, three, four years back, we were struggling to reach out to our customers through digital or interactions. So probably we were forcing digitalization, forcing our sales force that you have doctors to virtual meetings that you convince that they will come there and connect. Kare. But it was not possible. We were setting high ambitious targets. Let's do that around 30% uh, of our total touch points can be virtual and so on. But due to COVID, we have learned that at the same time, Customers ki taraf se adoption hai, they, are, they are coming towards virtual, virtual touch points and so on. So I think there is a significant adoption in terms of uh, enabling environment that more and more customers can be reached through the digital environment. So that is a, that's a really, really good thing. What we need to do now, probably as uh, coming back to the telehealth, I think there, there are two things we need to do. One is that create a simple value proposition, which is probably driven by uh, by convenience, a quality with the convenience driven to the to the patients. And then how do we make sure that we enable that environment that patients are able to move forward towards from a face-to-face -face interaction to a virtual interaction, and they are happy about it. So that's what I think as an organization or as an environment, we need to uh, work on it. Uh, I, like, yeah, uh, I would like to add, uh, we, we also have a very tougher regulation in healthcare marketing. Uh, you cannot advertise to masses, but uh, certainly our policy makers also need to work on some DTC laws, direct to consumer advertising, because our healthcare uh, providers are already burdened. If we allow some categories like vitamins, like anti-allergy, as in the West, so go to the DTC channel and patient himself go to the pharmacy and with the help of pharmacist he takes uh, for the minor ailments because m m most of the healthcare is out of pocket currently. So it's burden on the patient. It adds tests, certain tests, certain fee of the uh, HCP. So uh, if we have effective DTC laws, that will help the patient journey, specifically in the minor ailment. And then the HCP will be focusing on the more serious diseases. So the, if regulations are like this, then that can provide opportunity to healthcare marketing companies uh, to access more patients effectively. Mm -hmm. Ek mera is pe sawal hai and uh, because I come from a different uh, sort of marketing background. So we have ads or we have communication material banate where we want consumers to switch to a new brand or either to a new uh, model altogether. Uh, we go for a very emotional sort of advertising because this generally research or us hame pata chala ki consumers Pakistan mein bahut jazbati aur usi tarah ke hain so they would always want to see a story they would want to see an emotional messaging come out and that leads to purchase intent eventually when you talk about healthcare or is tarah ki new services do you feel that abhi communication bahut functional bahut convenience driven hai and maybe we need to you know take a spin on it and talk a little bit of, you know, emotional messaging. Uh, what's your take on that? Certainly, certainly in some areas like uh, in COVID it happens, you yourself mentioned that you people uh, went directly, ke bhai haad ho. Zururi, no drama, no emotions, because this is dangerous. If you are not washing your hand, it can take you to the illness. So certainly direct approach in some areas should be there. Uh, it's not necessary every time you have to have emo an emotional attachment to it. People should be uh, getting aware about the illnesses and ab about the problem attached with the illnesses. So certainly direct approach can help. Anyone would want to add to that? I think from my side, uh, we need to reach out to our consumers where they are. Uh, and by, by, by meaning this, there are more than 60 million social media accounts in Pakistan. So I think that's the success. The large population is uh, enabled with the social media. So why don't we have our messages toward uh, our messages related to telehealth or health education at the social media platform so patients are able to access it. As far as your uh, other question on the emotions are concerned, definitely our 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 Amari calm jo emotional hai, to hume emotions ke saath zarur positively usko link karna chahiye. But I think uh, we also need to be serious about it. Healthcare is a topic where generally Hamari uh, awam bahut zada serious nahi hoti. Hmm. But again, having said this, keep the message and have consistently deliver the same message again and again and again. To, to the broader masses. I'm sure that there will be future adoption on that. If we keep simple message and have a continuous frequency for a longer period of time, we should be able to see the adoption. 
I think yes, I, I very much so agree that consistency is a big issue. I think we see that across wo, ke hum shuru karte hai, but we're not able to read it. I'll just take a last question that you know, we all understand the benefits, we all understand kya infrastructure hai, but if in just one line you could tell that what is actually stopping you to get there. So agar aapke aaj aapko 1 million users ko paunch rahe hai, to wo 10 million ko paunchne ke liye kya problem aap as in your respective firms face kar rahe hai. Uh, so we'll start from Imran Saab and then we'll just go across the panel. Um, uh, I think we are heading towards that uh, phase where there is better understanding. Again, as I said, the digital uh, media landscape, landscape is growing rapidly, fast, and a lot of people are now acknowledging. Uh, yes, we all face challenges because maybe at some times there are people at the you know senior management they don't have understanding or don't know un realize the potential of digital media, but that is rapidly changing. And even in the government cycle, we have seen you know recently actually uh, for this health uh, insurance card, the Sehat and Saf card, uh, this was also run digitally across all digital media platforms, even on TikTok. You know we uh, we used. Uh, uh, TikTok influences to reach out to the rural areas and masses. So I think, yes, there was maybe like few years back, it was not, not possible, but now it's happening and we can see it, you know, uh, see the direction changing from the top management also. Thank you. Dr. Maida. Yeah, so great insights from both Mahmood and uh, Ghazali Saab. I think it's a great conversation. I'm just going to expand on that. Uh, so, you know, I think that the challenges we face is that I see, in my experience, I see a lot of really good health tech technology and digital solutions and devices and tools that are really, uh, you know, just ready, they're in the market or they're ready to market and to empower the end user. But what I don't see is again, a digital footprint or something that will allow the consumer, uh, again, like Ghazali uh, Saab mentioned that, you know, there's there's some pushback, maybe the higher management or they come from a different generation and they, they don't understand the power of uh, social media or the digital landscape. So I think we're definitely getting there. We're pushing the needle forward. But I would urge healthcare organizations um, to believe in the power and to invest in the power of uh, healthcare marketing as well. If they really want to, uh, you know, it's not, there's no use of having the technology out there if people aren't going to use it. So, uh, you know, if you want to give them sort of the power and you want to persuade them to start using these devices, I would definitely urge to get with, get on board with um, somebody with the domain expertise, uh, somebody with, uh, you know, a, a specialized skill set in healthcare marketing uh, to propel their projects in the, in the right way. Um, to you know, shift the narrative about health as we see it. Or up just bati, just bati, kaum ki baat kar rahi thi. It's not only us. I think it's just a world over globally. It's unless you know, there's a there's a famous, uh, a well-known saying that you have to provide the right message at the right time under the right circumstances. And so that's that's where we is. And just to second Mahmood as well, that we have to meet the patient where they are, and that involves the messaging as well. So it doesn't, you know, the consumer is not going to be. Uh, impressed by the high level features of your product. But for instance, if you're launching a mental health app and the messaging, you say that, you know, did you have another panic attack today? We see you, you know, that might really strike an emotional chord with the patient and, and compel the user to press that book now button. So this is where we have to sort of, you know, shift the narrative and shift the messaging and really be aware of who we are targeting, speak in a language that the consumers can understand. Very briefly, from my side, uh, I think if we can allow organization marketing opus, OPEX to have a higher portion on digital spend consistently over the years, future years, I think that would be one enabler for us as an organization or allow as a leadership should allow that. The second thing is that we should invest disproportionate time to make sure that we review those digital solutions, how we can remove the hurdles, how we can enable our teams to make sure they they can consistently move forward. And also the third thing is that not every solution which we develop is successful. Sometimes we fail and let's celebrate uh, or rather learn from our failures and allow our teams to make those failures and learn from it and make a better product for our, for our patient, our consumer. Because at the end of the day, we all are working to support our patients. So how we can continuously improve our solutions and improve, give them a better product or service. 
yeah, I think there are two challenges. One is I, I already mentioned there's the regulatory framework because that doesn't support the pharmaceutical companies to advertise effectively to the patient. And second is the mindset of the marketeers. I, I think one of my uh, colleague from the panel also mentioned uh, that they uh, used to spend on traditional ways where they feel that there is a greater marketing ROI uh, for those uh, type of activities. But when they go digital, probably they don't see that kind of ROI. Uh, so that, they, that may be the ch challenge, mindset challenge. That once they will do it, and uh, they, they will them, themselves experience that this is also an effective medium of conversion and realization of the product. Then, then they'll certainly go there. Definitely. Uh, with that, I think we'll bring the conversation to an end. Um, thank you so much, uh, the panel. Um, and it's been an interesting conversation. And uh, just a parting note from me, I feel that you know there's a lot of learnings which we can take from one another. And like we said, that every department or every industry out there has their own expertise. So it's just better to synergize and bring up with better solutions. Because at the end of the day, we're all serving the same consumers. Uh, so thank you. Um, do we have someone for uh, shield distribution? Thank you. You can please stay on. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for all the wonderful panelists and the host who have joined us from all over. So I'm going to have the names. Let me first thank Muhammad, Mahmood Hanif and Imran Ghazali and Dr. Maeda. Uh, so you can try and reach out and see if you can hold these or not. Yeah, so can I have your hands out, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. There you are. Thank so you so the camera can get them. So thank you very much. That's your shield. Uh, Ali has done a good job of saving some money on the shields area, making sure that you guys are uh, digitally there. Please ask for a better shield than this because you guys have to be sent. I've digitally. actually asked Delhi to post us our, our shield, so that, that area is covered. <laughs> you'll, you'll certainly be getting all of that. So, you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed the day as we come towards the end. I would like to call on, uh, yeah, Mohammed Akram Saab to please collect this from me. I'll have the honor and the pleasure of standing next to you and finally getting a picture taken. Thank you. And Khuda, what a wonderful moderation you did and great job over the COVID. I mean, you were at the forefront with other organizations as well who helped us fight this. So thank you very much for the great work that you have done.